General, would you care to step outside? Superman. Superman, thank God. I mean, get him! Come to me, son of jor Kneel before Zod! Our next movie, we step way up in class, it's the summer's biggest hit, it's Superman 2. And it's just delightful, a sequel that stands on its own. This is no ripoff. I enjoyed it even more than the original Superman film. In part two, Superman and Clark Kent are again played by Christopher Reeve. Early on in the film, Lois Lane, again played by Margot Kidder, is convinced that Clark Kent and Superman are indeed the same person. To force Clark Kent into revealing himself as Superman, Lois decides to jump in the Niagara Falls Rapids. She is certain Superman will save her. I'm so sure that you're Superman that I'm willing to bet my life on it. What? Now, if I'm right, you'll turn into Superman. Mm -hmm. And if I'm wrong, you've got yourself one hell of a story. You think I'm Superman? <laughs> Boy, you certainly have some imagination, Lois. For a minute there, you almost had me convinced. For a minute. Bye-bye, baby. Oh, oh. oh, my God. Excuse me, please. was Superman. Sorry. This is really embarrassing. <laughs> He's just great there. Christopher Reeve is Clark Kent. He doesn't get enough credit, I think, for the Clark Kent role in these films. He sort of reminds me of Cary Grant in some of his comedies, bumbling yet very appealing. The main themes in the Superman sequel, of course, are the threats to the survival of the planet Earth and Superman's love for Lois Lane. Well, first, the threat to Earth. It's posed by three space criminals with superpowers from Krypton. They were trapped in an outer space jail in the first movie, you'll recall. Now they've escaped and they've come to Earth to rule it. They first arrive in a western town and the U.S. Army goes all out to stop them. Stand by rocket. Clear it! Fire again. Machines to fly. Thank you, Dad. But bravery. Be nice to them, my dear. Blow them a kiss. Lots of action there, but the romance is the best part of this movie as Superman declares his love for Lois Lane. I thought we might, uh, <coughs> abandon the orange juice for once. Here, cheers. Cheers. For the first time in my life, everything's clear.
I'm going to go change into something more comfortable. That's nice. We haven't had too many good love stories in the movies lately. However, this is one. In fact, I thought the love story was better than the film's action scenes, which for me went on a little too long and weren't, I thought, all that special. No, it's the love story and Christopher Reeve's performance as Superman and as Clark Kent that makes Superman 2 such a success. It's tough being a convincing lover wearing a red cape and blue tights, <laughs> but Christopher Reeve does it very well. I can't wait for Superman 3, and I think i got to wait two years. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> you know, it's kind of a close call whether you like the love story or the special effects more. I think most people who are going to see this movie, and millions of people are, mm -hmm. are interested in the special effects. And especially in the way that this movie combines Superman, who was really the first pop art hero, with all these other pop artifacts, like the Empire State Building, the Eiffel Tower, mm -hmm. Times Square, the Coca-Cola sign, and so forth. But on the other hand, I love the love story, and I was just thinking, watching that scene, the casting director of this film should get a lot of the credit, because this kind of material could easily slide right yeah. off into the totally ridiculous. And Margot Kidder and Christopher Reeve, Gene Hackman, and the rest are good enough actors to really be able to carry it off. And I think Reeve really has to get the credit mm -hmm. here. If you didn't buy that the Superman character was real in some way, that his emotions were real at least, the whole thing would fall off. Mm -hmm. It would be either just a kiddie show or it would be a put down of the material. Mm -hmm. But I think that Reeve in his portrayal does something very special, which is he has fun with it, he enjoys it, and we enjoy that too, but he mm -hmm. buys it. He believes it, we go with it. I think it's a nice job of acting, really. And I think this is the kind of picture where the acting just gets overlooked, so that's why I want to signal it out. You know, I was trying to think back uh, two, three, four years ago to when I first heard they were going to make a Superman movie, mm -hmm. and I thought it can't be done, you know. And the original ad, remember, you'll believe a man can fly. I believed a man could fly, but I didn't believe he could make any money at the box office. So <laughs> now that the series is a success, and there is going to be a Superman 3, it's interesting to think how easily this whole thing could have gone wrong. And finally, two very enthusiastic yes votes for Superman 2. Gene and I both thought it was even better than the original. Maybe we ought to take a look at the summer's movies and how they're developing, because a lot of the big ones are out. One thing that I noticed right away is that a lot of these films are part of what I call the juvenilization mm -hmm. of the American movie. These are a lot of films pitched at the young audience, and I'm afraid that I don't like that trend for the only reason that I wish there was a more wide range of material. I think the movies are tending to become the exclusive mm -hmm. property of the young, and that bothers well, me. Well, it is a trend. I don't know if I dislike it or not. 80% of the movie audience is under the age of 25, and so I guess they might as well make movies for the average moviegoer, who is probably 17 or 18 years old. The problem is, as a critic, I'm always writing reviews saying, this movie made me feel like a kid again. Well, I enjoyed that. Raiders of the Lost right. Ark, Superman 2, it's great to feel like a kid again. Once in a while, I'd like to feel like an adult again. <laughs> okay, I agree with you. Very good. Next week on Sneak